Hi all, this slide shows the somatic cell cycle. Somatic cells are body cells, all of the cells of our bodies, other than the cells that become sperm and egg. The somatic cell cycle can be broken up into several phases, GAP1 or G1 phase, S phase, GAP2 or G2 phase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Back when I was in college, we used the term interphase as any time the cell wasn't in mitosis or cytokinesis. That's because with a light microscope like we have in lab, it's only during mitosis and cytokinesis that you could see something different going on. But since the 1980s, technologies have developed that have allowed us to understand that different things go on at different portions of interphase. So the term interphase is becoming quite obsolete and we're now using the terms G1 phase S phase and G2 phase. Consider one cell in our body that has just been produced. This cell enters G1 phase, which is like the child of the cell's childhood in some ways. In G1 phase, the cell acquires resources, builds structure, matures, and maybe grows in size, and performs the functions it's supposed to perform. G1 phase kidney cells act like kidney cells. G1 cartilage cells act like cartilage cells, etc. At some point, the cell might transition from G1 into S phase. The S in S phase stands for synthesis, and the thing that is synthesized is DNA. This is the beginning of preparation for cell division. By the end of S phase, each chromosome has been replicated. The two replica copies are called sister chromatids. They remain physically attached to one another at this point in the process. When all of the cells are replicated, the cells move from S phase into G2 phase. In G2 phase, the cell manufactures and prepares the structures that will be necessary for mitosis and cytokinesis. This is kind of like adolescence and puberty in teenagers as they transition, biologically, from childhood to reproductive age. When the cell has all the pieces in place, it enters mitosis. Mitosis is known as nuclear division. It will accomplish the task of splitting the replicated chromosomes apart so that there are two separate and complete replica genomes. The cell will then split in two. This is called cytokinesis, with each daughter cell owning one of the replica genomes. Mitosis itself is split into several phases. Here's what goes on in each phase. Prophase. The nuclear membrane breaks down. This gives the chromosomes room to move around in the cell. The chromosomes condense. During the bulk of the life of a cell, the chromosomes are spread out as ultra-thin thread-like molecules. You could think of it like sewing thread. During mitosis, the chromosomes become very tightly wound around bunches and bunches of proteins. This is like wrapping sewing thread around a spool it's much easier to move lots of pieces of thread around if they're all wrapped around their own spools. Spindle fibers begin to emerge. These will be like bungee cords that move the chromosomes around the cell. In pro-metaphase, the anchor points for the spindle fibers form. Kinetochores are anchor points on each chromosome. Centrosomes are anchor points that will migrate to opposite poles of the cell. The chromosomes complete condensing. At this point, they look like X-shaped. They look X-shaped because the two sister chromatids or replica copies are stuck together in the middle. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell. The sister chromatids are still con connected to each other. One sister chromatid is, is is attached by a spindle fiber to one centrosome. The other sister chromatid is attached to the centrosome on the opposite side of the cell. The spindle fiber attachment situation occurs for each of the chromosomes. In anaphase, the sister chromatids are separated from one another. One sister chromatid begins to be pulled by its spindle fiber towards one pole of the cell. Its replica sister chromatid starts getting pulled to the opposite side of the cell. In telophase, the separating of sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell is complete. 
If that separation works right for each of the chromosomes, then the result will be one complete set of chrome, a genome or set of chromosomes on one side of the cell and a replica genome on the other side of the cell. That's mitosis. After mitosis, cytokinesis usually occurs. Cytokinesis is the splitting in two of the entire cell. In animal cells, the plasma membrane pinches in down the middle of the cell so that two smaller cells result. In plant cells, more and more little islands of Golgi vesicles, membranes plus cell wall materials, are laid down until they connect to form new cell walls lined with plasma membrane. Either way, the result is two new daughter cells. If everything works right, both daughter cells should be genetically identical to one another and to the cell that started this cell cycle. That, that is, the somatic cell cycle is a clonal form of cellular reproduction. And that's how a single fertilized egg, sea urchin, or human, and all other multicellular organisms becomes and maintains a body of many, many cells.